Hey, it's the Bullet 10 year. We're coming in. We're going to review it. We're going to review it. What else we got going on? We're the Scotch Scott. Test Dummies. I'm Scott. He's Bart. Boom. He's got a size medium t shirt on. Bam, it makes me look big. Bullet 10 year. Let's test it. Boom, test it. <laughs> All right, Scott, before we get into the Scotch, God, shout out. Do you want to explain what we're doing in the shirts? Let's do this Scotch God shout out first, then we'll explain the shirts. Boom, that's what we're going to do. By the way, two, three, three, two, three, four. Enough said. Next. Ryan Finney. Finney. Love the name. Irish. <laughs> Go back. Is it? Are you sure? Pretty sure. All right. Uh, on the Noah's Mill. Could be an American Irish. Uh, Noah's Mill Boutique Bourbon. Uh, we the had boutique commented. makes it manly. Uh, Noah's Mill used to have a 15 year age statement on it and it's recently gone NAS. Wow. So Ryan comments, he says, it said that when Noah's Mill had a 15 year age statement, that 15 was the youngest bottle in the blend. That would make sense. Due to the whiskey shortage today, the blend is supposedly four to 20 years old. I really like Noah's Mill, but I'm not a fan of its younger cousin, Rowan's Creek. I find Rowan's Creek over Minty, which is the, the, the cousin or the sister bottle I was trying to think of during the, the show. The cousin or remember. the sister. However it's like you kissing phrase your it. sister. However you think of it. Some may say, you know, the cousin distillery or the sister distillery. Yeah, yeah. Step uncle. Are you laughing at me? Just I tried laughing. I tried laughing trail. at you earlier today and you got mad. I did. I, I got <laughs> I must have some hidden tension. <laughs> So I he, told him he was acting like a girl, and he really got mad. I he like hung girls. up on me. I like girls. He yeah. hung up on me, man. I called you back. Did you just hang up on me? I'm thinking best friends just trashing me. Not that being a girl's trashing me, <laughs> but I'm thinking I'm like, why? It's, it's my day off. I don't need all this hate and discontent. <laughs> what I need is some time to meditate and to yeah. focus. <laughs> I was actually while this was going on, I was messing with. I had a horrible TV mount for yeah. my big screen TV. It was horrible. I couldn't get in. My, my hands are too big to get behind there. And cables would like pop loose. So I was like, uh, first of all, there was a little bit of anger there. I'm done with this mount. <laughs> Screw this mount. It's too had you, close. Had you kicked it yet? Hadn't that's that's my it. that's my tipping point. Wanted to kick, rip it off the wall because these oh, well. my, my uh, HDMI cables would somehow work loose and then it'd go audio not working, HDMI not connected. I'm like I can't even get in there. So I finally just said screw it. Ordered a whole new mount, like a hefty hefty mount that comes out, swings around, spins, mm -hmm. swivels, swivels. Yeah. It looks great, but it shows up. Can'ts. Can'ts, moves, maneuvers, it'd be great for whatever. Probably the mount you should have got to begin with. Should have. Should have got that mount from the get-go. However, I've got this weird thing on the wall that I won't go into, but everything's on 24 inches instead of 16. And in order to give me more room. That's because of your contractor. Contractor, but to give me more room in the room, they put the two by fours on their side up against the concrete instead of lengthwise. That's good. I don't mind that. That's fine. But then for some reason, they went 24 inches, and the mount that shows up is 18. Nothing in the United States is 24 inches. I know. The so then I had to go get a piece of wood. I'm matching that up. And then in the middle of that, you're acting like me. Mm, mm, mm. I was like, oh, hell, F it. F it. Click. <laughs> then he calls back. Uh, I think we dropped connection. No, I hung up on you, God dang it. I'm still pissed off. And it was really much less him than my, my lack of... I'm not very handy. Let's be honest right there. Now I can handle this. We're going to have to speed this up a little. Okay, we're speeding it up. Or am I handy? No. Enough said. Boom. I, I, I want it a little bit more. I don't. I'm trying okay. to go. Chupacabra is now... Oh, the siren's going. No, it's not even a siren. It's an airplane. No, you're right. It's a siren. So, so we're just going to have to pause it's a and back. Okay. This always reminds me of Zootopia when the, the night oh, hours. Yeah. You're gonna start a howl. We just start howling. They all gotta start. Yeah. You're <laughs> brilliant. You're brilliant. <laughs> all right, the chupacabra's under control. My story stopped. We're just stopping it cold. We're not gonna go any yeah, further. Yeah, let's move on. T-shirt. The shirt. We got. Um, we got samples of Lucky Bastard. 
whiskey. Yes. I think it's, they make several, but we got the single malt Lucky Bastard, I believe. Right. I'm going from memory here. We good, haven't reviewed them yet. Good They'll probably be during a live stream. Right, because they're samples. But, yes, Whiskey Throttle also sent us Lucky Bastard t-shirts. That's right. But he sent a medium and a large. Right, this is the large. I took the large. I love this I style. I left Mark with the medium. So I, I wore the medium. <laughs> now you mentioned this to Lucky Bastard, and what is he, or not Lucky Bastard, sorry, you mentioned this to uh, Whiskey Throttle. Whiskey Throttle, and he says, Boom. my apologies. Yeah, he sends me one. You Something gonna put that else. on? My yeah. hair. Take that shirt off and put that one on. Oh no, they don't want to see nipples and hairy <laughs> yeti chest. So we're going to double up. First of all, you put that one on over the medium, you're yeah. keeping the medium. I'm, oh my God, you don't want, you don't need <laughs> to have them both. I'll sweat it. I do have you. the, uh, it's not yeah. a party until someone pulls out the pickle. Woo! The pickle. You w know www.luckybastard.ca. Oh. Sasca Saskatchewan's. Saskatchewan original thrill of the deal what i love about this i'm a huge world war ii fan and mm. this looks like plain art yeah you know they have the guys do the little plain art on there so yeah. way to go lucky bastard and i'm wearing <coughs> this is my wife's puerto rican leather hat enough said it's made an appearance before <laughs> enough said all right what do you get on the nose here boy this shirt's hot you need the medium underneath Oak, Love it. oak, cinnamon, pine, and pickle. Do you pick up? Do you pick up a little rye when you yeah. say pickle? Do yep. you mean rye? Yeah, because yep. I get a rye forwardness on there. You're right. Cinnamon, definitely the wood notes in there. But the rye, and I love a a high mash bill rye in my bourbon. Love it. Gives it the spicy kick that I crave. So the bullet bourbon tin. Now, you know our first bullet, first of all, I love their marketing. I know that Western theme, but I feel like literally that was pulled off the back shelf of a saloon. Yeah, that's what the labeling on it, the bottle. Um, so this is Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, bottled at 45.6%. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, if you don't know, a bourbon means it has to be 51% corn. That other 49% can be corn it can be rye it can be wheat wheat right um, that's pretty much malted barley in. right malted barley's in there to always so help with fermentation you, if you have a high rye content though those rye notes will start to come out which is what's happening here some of that other 49 percent is it, there's obviously a high rye content in there i get a muskiness the oak is definitely prevalent being in it for 10 years i get a lot of wood forward flavors lemon i just got a little lemon on the nose mm. when i first took off my coin i don't know if i've got lemon before with a bourbon mm. there's a little bit of stringency in here which surprises me did you say the abv yes 45.6 45 yes you did yep mm. You know, usually I don't get that same kind of astringency with a bourbon. Um, usually I'm finding that with uh, with a lot of the scotches. Mm. A uh, toffee finish lingers softly, fading, fading, and pretty much gone, so it doesn't hang around too long. A lot more oak forward, which I guess you would expect. It's very sweet. It came off very sweet to me. Mm. Uh, it's rich, full, oak, vanilla, cinnamon, great, usual bourbon notes. Wow. I get like a double oak on the front. In the middle, I kind of get like a, a floral note. Cinnamon. Slight pepper spice. Okay, I get the pepper, I don't get the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. And slight rye notes are coming out. Are you getting the astringency kind of a, a little bit? My gum line. A little bit. And in the mm -hmm. center of Not my real cheeks. bad. Not I bad. agree with you, a very quick finish. Yeah. It's there and it's gone. Gone. Boom. I have to really do my circular breathing to continue to kind of pick up that, that caramel. Huh. Did we already say I, 233, 234? Yes. I think I did early. Okay, got it. Yeah, let me definitely. I, I don't have any different in my notes with the water added. Okay. So sometimes the water brings out something that wasn't there before. Right. 
sometimes it doesn't. We had a guy come in and spend a long time about how, how uh, you know, water isn't uh, necessary. Water doesn't always change everything. And I'm like, this was in the comments. I'm like, well, I agree with you. You yeah. must have watched yeah. one of our shows where it wasn't clear that we kind of knew that water sometimes will change something drastically and sometimes not at all. Yeah. So, yeah. and quite honestly, sometimes Funny. when I'm tasting, I'll bring the ABV way down. I mean, way watered down beyond what I would ever sip at just to see if there's an extra note that I can pick up. Mm. I get a very, almost like a back to the nose, like a dusty oak. Mm, yep. Dusty, but, dirty barrel. Yes. Yep. I was going to say like, uh, like a, uh, a wood muskiness mm -hmm. is kind of what I'm getting, but you're right. Mm -hmm. Dusty oak. Right. But I don't, I don't think, I don't mind the oak, but at the same time, I know kind of where your oak level is mm -hmm. at. I don't think this is over oaked. Well, you're, where, you're, you, where are you you're, coming in? I'm at? not going to say it's over oaked, but I'm, I am going to tell you that, that, uh, that was my one concern coming in that, that, Virgin oak barrels are already very powerful, and um, ten years in a barrel, I figured this was going to be wood forward. And if you like the oakiness of uh, your dram, you're going to enjoy this. I don't like wood forward as much. Um, I like a lot more of the the caramel and vanilla cream flavors along with. Um, the rye spiciness. So I'm enjoying that, but not the wood quite as much. I have not seen your score. This is an 84 Ooh. for me. An 84. You got an 89 89. in there. So I think the 10 years has treated this pretty good. 11, maybe 12 years would be too long. Yeah. So again, I, th I don't, uh, I'm not saying it's over oaked. It's pretty much what I would expect it to be at, at a 10 year. I love the nose on it. I love the rye flavors in there, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's very oak forward. And that's just, my mm -hmm. palate is not as, not oak friendly, but I'm not searching out the, the wood forward notes as much. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? I how much? I, I, I just real quick I like it I like the oak in it and sometimes I don't mind um, too much oak right to well, me got, it's a it's like a, uh, a coming of age hmm. you know I've got buddies you get a well aged yeah you flavors. get a well aged bourbon or a well aged whiskey and you're gonna get wood I mean that's just that's the name of the game so if you get a well get wood. let me recapsulate that <laughs> if you get a well aged bourbon you, you're gonna get wood you take that however you want <laughs> to take that <laughs> I, I've just let it stand is what you said I think that's a great I gave it I gave it an 89 if you didn't see um, it, it's man this is it's close to really pushing into the outstanding category right there hmm. uh, and I think it's um, I'm not calling for a versus maybe hmm. we do maybe we do a regular bullet versus bullet tenure and see it what crossed the my mind, is. but I wasn't going to throw it out there because I feel like I'm saying versus versus all the time yeah, versus versus but, another versus sounds like a versus <laughs> But the 10 to the regular um, the regular bullet bourbon, I think would be interesting because, um, and I don't have it here, I don't believe. I you don't did have, I thought you did have a bottle. Oh, there's the rye. I can see the bullet rye over there. You see the bullet rye? I remember the and bullet, bullet rye. bourbons I did down there on the bottom shelf behind Should the mezcal. Pause. It's almost gone. Ooh. Let's do it right now. <laughs> Boy, that thing though, who knows how, how yeah. that's oxidized. We're back. We've got to do it right now. We're going to do a little uh, impromptu bullet bar. Oh, the cork's loose too. This may be heavily oxidized. I think this is worth calling it in the title now. We can okay. call it uh, a versus. The right notes on the palette. At the, on the finish, really coming out. Really, I love the rye notes. What is our bottled ABV of the regular bullet bourbon? You might as well leave the bottle in here. What right. are we at? Forty-five percent. Oh boy, you got enough. You want more? Should be a little more. All right, a little more. Is that enough? That's good. All right, I'm trying to get light on the pour. All right, they're in. So you can see it. 
We need coffee. I don't have coffee in. Oh yeah. Do another coin. Do it. All right, right off the bat, I don't get the right. 236 on my old bullet bourbon. All right, I don't get the <coughs> rye notes on the old bourbon at all. Sorry, I better be clear. I don't get the rye notes on the regular bullet bourbon. And does it say how old it is? 45%. Doesn't say limestone filtered water. I sloshed a little bit. Okay. So the nose is phenomenal on, on the standard? bullet 10. No, yeah, the I was going to say, 10, I'm, not, phenomenal. I'm not getting too much nose off of the regular bullet. Bullet 10, phenomenal nose. I can pick up the rye uh, mm -hmm. undertones in there. Heck, not undertones, yeah. it's rye forward. Yes. On the regular bourbon. Especially now, of course, we've, bourbon, this has been sitting out for 20 minutes now. Right. The regular bullet bourbon, I got to really, really get in there. Again, this has been pretty darn low, and we probably reviewed this two years ago. So there could be some oxidization going on. I get some deep floral notes, some sweetness, some honeycomb. Mm. Mm. Okay, regular, regular bullet. It's a good bourbon. Take its flavors and amplify them, and you get the tin. The tin is much fuller. Yes. More depth. Lot, more oak. A lot more oak. Lot I more, still get. I'm getting a little wood. bit. I'm getting a little bit of rye. <laughs> you get a lot of wood with the mm. bullet tin. Hmm. That I, is that is interesting. Because I get a little bit of rye, not near as much. Right. Compared to the tin, there's a little bit of rye present. More vanilla and cream. More cream, more vanilla, which is why I'm leaning toward the the non-tin year. It was, uh, but if again the wood influence, you're right. I feel like this is definitely the big brother. Mm -hmm. As soon as it hits your your tongue, you can tell the difference. Clearly. From the tin. Mm-hmm. Price-wise, what we didn't get into yet is the Bullet wow. Bourbon 10, $50. Okay. Is it worth it? I think that's top end. Is it worth 50? Yes. Is it worth 55? No. Okay. All right. I'm not going to argue with you. The 10 years that you're getting in here, the comparison between the two, again, I'm going to say this could have a lot of oxidization going on. This is definitely more flavorful mm. than what we got going on now. here. What's regular bullet though? Twenty-eight, thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah, roughly. In that I don't. I don't price. think it's so it double the price. I don't Is think it double it the flavor. Not quite double, but close. Right. I know it's very close. It's forty percent more. I think if I'm sitting there and I'm in the store debating, if you're mixing it with Coke, you want the bullet oh, regular. If, if you are a Coke. bourbon sipper, this is worth the extra. $20. I would say this is your better sipper for sure. It's wood forward, but just head to head. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. even though there's 40, bullet fans out there too. Forty-five point six percent and forty-five, so really the same. Right. You're not going to notice that point six difference. Mm -mm. But just the richness and the oakiness and the fullness that's here in the tin yeah. over the standard is head and worth shoulders the twenty dollars difference. Head and shoulders above. What's interesting is the cream from the ten-year-old. In comparison, the cream is much stronger here. Yeah. Although the wood's right next to it, the cream, the vanilla cream, everything's it's, amplified in the tin. It's coming out. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So it's nice that we quickly pulled that in. Um, again, there's going to be some that are going to say, come on, man, look at that. He'll slay that already. <laughs> I, I agree. You didn't know it was down there. No, I didn't. You know what? I had a fire pit thing going on once, and I pulled out the bourbon oh, yeah. tin, and that was what was left when we were done with the fire pit. <clears throat> so I actually thought it was gone. That's why it's been, it was hiding behind some mezcal. Can you believe the bullet would hide behind mezcal? Mm. <laughs> All right. Bullet tin blows it away. Even the cream. The caramel, the vanillas are stronger here. It's just that the wood is so much more influenced that it had me kind of saying, huh, because the wood's not nearly as strong in the regular bullet. Yeah. 
And, uh, but, it's, it's definitely noticeable. But still, it, uh, still good. Still very good. But you're. <clears throat> if you, I if, would if say if this was a t- if this worth. was a ten, this is a six. Okay, and I'd say you're getting your money's worth. That I'm with you. You don't want to go much higher, but you're definitely getting your money's worth from the two. Mm-hmm. I can clearly tell the difference. Clearly. And that's one more example of scotching it, you scotch gods. It's a luncher. Dummies. Dummies. Dummies.